Hi students, in this video, we'll talk about the last section in this chapter of gases. And really, this last concept or this last equation is unique because it doesn't involve more than one parameter. So in this last section, we are going to be discussing Dalton's law of partial pressures. So with Dalton's law of partial pressures, we see that the total pressure of a gas is the sum of its parts. So in this cylinder to the left, we have a certain amount of helium, two atmospheres of pressure. Because the majority of volume is empty space, we can combine this same cylinder's particles with the cylinder on the right, which is argon gas. The argon gas is exerting a pressure of four atmospheres. But again, the majority of space it occupies is empty space. When the two are added together, there's still room to fit all the particles. However, due to the increase of particles, there is an increase to the number of collisions on the walls of the container. That increase in the number of collisions results in an increase in pressure. But the total pressure is the sum of the pressure or the collisions related to the helium particles and the argon particles. All you have to do is add the pressures of the two to get the total pressure. So that's essentially Dalton's law of partial pressures. So according to kinetic molecular theory, each gas in a mixture acts independently of the others. And we've already talked about that. There is typically no attractive forces taking place. Each individual gas pressure is called a partial pressure. They're part of the entire pressure. Dalton's law of partial pressure is a sum of all pressures exerted from all gases in the mixture to give a total pressure. So the reason why they write one, two, plus three, dot, 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 is because there can be one gas, two gases, three types of gases, four, and so on and so on but it's basically the sum of the parts equal, equal the whole. So an example problem, a scuba tank contains oxygen with a pressure of 0 0.450 atmospheres and helium at 855 millimeters of mercury. What is the total pressure in millimeters of mercury in the tank? So my P total, my total pressure is gonna be proportional to the number of collisions, but all collisions. And the collisions are proportional to the pressure of the individual collisions of each gas. So the pressure of the oxygen gas plus the pressure of the helium gas. Now I want my total pressure to be in millimeters of mercury. My helium is already in millimeters of mercury. So I just need to make sure to convert my pressure of oxygen which I have as 0 0.450 atmospheres into millimeters of mercury. That's an easy conversion factor. By now, you probably have it memorized after watching these videos. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. And that will give me the amount of millimeters of mercury that I can add to the 855 millimeters of mercury of helium. So, it appears that this is the pressure of my oxygen, and that looks right, about half of 760, right? 342, plus 855 millimeters of mercury add up to 1197. Now, look, if you look, the, the significant figures are correct, because in the 0 0.450, there's three sig figs, because that trailing zero counts, so my final answer had, three sig figs. But when I use the rules of addition and subtraction, the 855 plus 342 means my final answer has to go to the ones place. So 1197 ends in the ones place. So that is the correct amount of sig figs via following the rules for addition and subtraction. Now what you have to realize is the majority of gases we deal with are homogeneous mixtures. Air is not a pure gas. It has different components. 
different solute and solvent components. The largest quantity of gas is the nitrogen. So the largest quantity would be your solvent. So in air, the solvent is nitrogen. All the other components, the smaller, lesser quantities or amounts are called solutes. So they're in a smaller amount. So fewer particles, and we can see this based on the percentages, results in less collisions and less pressure. However, because all of these particles are contained in air, you would have to add up all the pressures to get the total pressure. So when we add all these pressures, we get 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equivalent to one atmosphere of pressure. When is it tricky? Well, we've learned through both single displacement and double displacement reactions that we can produce gas. We've seen it with gas evolution reactions, and we've seen it in lab. And when we collect gases in these single displacement and double displacement reactions, they're typically taking place in solution. They're called aqueous reactions as well because you dissolve a salt in water, which makes it an aqueous homo hom homogeneous solution. When you collect a gas over water, you have to understand that some of the water vaporizes while you collect the gas. So the total pressure is equal to that of the gas and the water that vaporizes. So typically, the P total pressure equals P gas plus P water vapor. So partial pressures of water are not things that you are expected to memorize. You'll see that we'll be using a table similar to this overhead in experiment 10, where water pressures are tabulated and you're not expected to memorize those. Here's an example of that tabulation. We see as the temperature of water increases, its vapor pressure also increases. And as we approach its boiling point, we reach 760 millimeters of mercury. But again, in this table, it would be provided at different temperatures what the vapor pressure of water is. Why is that useful? Well, in the prior slide, I showed a reaction where you are collecting a gas by displacing water in a bottle. If we take a look at this, this is a reaction that we've actually done in lab. We take a zinc solid, add it to hydrochloric acid, and this is a single displacement reaction. We recognize this because we have an element and a compound, really more specifically, a metal and an acid, and we displace a new metal, hydrogen gas, and a new compound, a salt, which is zinc chloride, and that will be dissolved in solution. So we see in this picture, it's denoting the zinc dissolving in solution, displacing the hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas could be collected through water in this trough and displace the water downward. But you have to understand that the liquid water also vaporizes. So the total pressure in this volume the total pressure in that volume is the pressure of the gas, in this case, the hydrogen gas and the water vapor that's vaporizing. So I hope the concept of Dalton's law of partial pressure makes sense. It is essentially that the total pressure of a gas mixture is the sum of its parts, and you could easily calculate that by adding the individual pressures. So thanks for your time and thanks for watching.